Farmers. My name is Bob Beatty, UC Farm Advisor for uh, Kings County uh, Tree Crops, and I have with me today Chris Wiley of AgriWorld. And Chris, we're very grateful for your time that you're going to spend with us today. Uh, we are going to attempt to demonstrate how to prune a mature pistachio tree. And the first step is to come through with your hand shears and perform what cuts need to be made from the ground but we want to emphasize that the number of hand cuts made from the ground should be kept to a minimum or just to those that are absolutely necessary. For the purposes of mature tree pruning, I'm going to use the term heading cut, which is removing a portion of a limb as uh, applying it to heading back to laterals. And so here we have, we have a branch and I'm going to head this fruiting branch back to a lateral here and the same terminology I'm going to use here to head back to these laterals. Now a thinning cut in, in horticulture is used for removing an entire limb at its point of origin and so for the purposes in the mature trees we would then talk about thinning out a limb as coming down to this point here and removing this entire fruiting structure. And if I were going to take this limb here and thin it, I would come to this point and remove it. This is getting kind of whippy and then we want to make sure it can shake. So it's just all we, we don't do thinning cuts on stuff like this, we do heading cuts. So a little heading cut there, right there, that'll be stiff now, that should shake just fine. The pistachios are apically dominant, meaning that the growth always occurs from the tips and we get very little lateral growth on pistachio. The fruit wood is always being born on the terminals and, and it's for that reason that the, the fruiting wood then gets further and further away from the axis of the tree and as these limbs get longer, their tendency then is to, is to move downward and also for the fruit wood up in this area to get further and further out beyond the catch frame of the tree. So with that said, Chris, come in and, and take this as an example and describe to us the kinds of cuts that you would make. So I'd come up here for that growth ring and then maybe do that heading cut there. This limb was definitely still with all these spurs from the last few years. The leaf area is still well enough to keep this limb healthy for a few more years then eventually we'll lose this, but it's still very productive for a few more years. And these heading cuts like this one right here, it had a few one-year-old whips, and then the man made a cut here last year, and look at all this nice growth. So that adds a lot of fruiting area, a lot of whips and leaf area to keep this limb healthy for another year or two. Now, Chris, in order to provide adequate light to this, would you be inclined to possibly come in and thin I, this out? Hurt. You bet. That's a good idea. So if we cut this out, we then have a little more opportunity to preserve this. So you have to be careful that uh, you don't prune the upper, upper limb so much in a, in a quest to keep this alive that you've now lost the value of or the structure of the upper limb. You don't limb. over prune this limb. This limb should be the lifetime of the tree. I have no doubt that this should make the lifetime of the tree.